everyone, Freedy here, here and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build for this week's content. Today's build is one that will focus heavily on Gambit or PvE boss related content, where you can run and gun with not one, not two, but maybe three if you like to, shotguns, while also having a very powerful melee that will pretty much delete everything and anyone it touches, while also having some crazy synergy between everything from shotgun ammo being provided via surrounding kills, to having a large amount of melee energy return back to you via the heavy handed mod, and the list goes on from there. I can tell you right now, if you're a player who plays a lot of Gambit on a regular basis, and you want a build that will reward you for your running gun skills, but also being capable of taking on the big ads easily, and pretty much melt them in mere seconds, then this build right here will be just for you, as that's exactly what the build will consist of. What would truly make the build perfect is the main following things, having things such as the Solar Plexus mod, combined with the Paragon Greaves, Coda the Fireforge, or one to punch shotguns of your choice, and the new Seasonal Dawn heavy handed mod for an all out and all purpose mobile boss lane build. And that's pretty much it. This one's a monster in the right hand for PvE players, but it also brings in some new variety of fun when playing around with it. So if this sounds like something up your alley, then sit back and enjoy the rest of the video. So for the subclass of today's choice, we will be going with the code of the Fire Force tree line for the Hammer Strike perk, and pretty much everything else is just the cherry on top. Now everyone and their mothers know what exactly Hammer Strike does and how extremely powerful it can get with the right buffs and player enhancements it can provide. But for those that are new or generally are new like players, Hammer Strike allows you to build up momentum and release a large hammer swing that will pretty much one shot the vast majority of minor to major level threat enemies with ease. While the bosses will take a large number of damage, but not outright die. However, while that has been applied, you will also get a 30% damage debuff on your enemies. Although originally it was 50% for 6 seconds, but with the extended duration of 10 seconds now, it now not only will you be able to chew through most bosses health easily, but when combined with a shotgun such as a 1-2 punch shotgun or trench barrel and a large amount of ammo, you can do some serious work on a singular boss of any of your choosing. Now further combine this subclass with perks that restore melee energy on the get go or exotics that provide further enhancements and well you pretty much overkill the boss at this point. On its own the perk is amazing and simple to use for whatever build you have in mind, but when fully broken down and delved into, and basically theory crafted into multiple ways you can build around this ability, it can become even more stronger than ever before. Now of course the rest of the subclass tree perks are more or less there and passively useful, but not really going to have that much usage in the overall build. Don't get me wrong, we do still use our super in the build on our grenades, but our main focus is the synergy between our shotgun and our melee. For your grenades, there aren't no good or bad choices to pick here, so pick what you think is best for you. But for overall recommended grenades, thermite grenades are probably your best and top choices to pick, in terms of damage and duration. While fusion grenades are good against these singular bosses or major level of enemies. And then incendiary is just all around great, so pick which one you think is best. Now for the weapons, this is where things will become interesting. As we have the heavy handed mod which will provide us energy towards our melee via charge by light, and this secondary bonus of extra ammo to our reserves, what we want to have is a primary and secondary is double shotguns with ideally a one two punch and maybe trench battle if you want to mix it up. Now what to choose as your shotgun is down to you, as I've gone with the last man standing with a boss spec to fully equip it for boss encounters, while my perfect paradox has trench battle, which is more or less catered towards the lower end of adds, so the minor, majors, ultras, and sometimes the bosses at times, depending. What you choose is heavy down to what shotguns feel comfortable for you, but you do need to have the following shotgun to have a 1-2 punch perk available, so that you can use this primarily against bosses. For the trench barrel side of things, it's not wholly needed and in fact can be swapped out for another 1-2 punch to further retain ammo and also dish out damage faster, but consistently but it is recommended to have at least one as a backup in case your 1-2 punch shotgun runs out of ammo, or you need that extra bit of damage boost that Rampage and Kill Clip can't provide in certain situations, aka boss encounters. It's also ideal to place a backup mag on your shotguns, especially the 1-2 punch version, so you can output damage much longer with that extra round in the chamber, 
or better off try and grind for one with a fill pep available, which will boost your overall reserves. Now for your heavy, I would recommend something that can counter invaders while also giving you an opportunity to invade others if need be. And the best weapon for that in my case is, unfortunately, the Truth Rocket Launcher, which I know a lot of people will complain about in Gambit, but here this is Gambit, we shouldn't really care that much. If you don't have that, then you can always use a machine gun, such as the Black Army version one, which can do the job very nicely. Although having tractor cannon would be more suitable for the one with combo build, as you can pretty much have a triple shotgun build, you don't need another debuffing ability added on to your current debuff, as they don't stack. But also, it's going to leave you very defenseless against invaders who always have the higher ground. You can try it, but be fully aware of where you stand with this. For the stats, we've got nearly everything across the field all leveled out, which surprisingly is quite odd, as I usually have either a resilience stat being off or recovery stat being off, or generally most of my stats being completely off from either a point or two. But in this case here, everything seems to be leveled out, which more or less I can't really complain about. What we have currently shown is that our resilience and recovery being in the 50 ranges, which is perfect for us as it's not much and it's not too little. While at the same time, Discipline is also in his 50s for that nice grenade regen, although like I said earlier on, grenades aren't really going to be that wholeheartedly used in this build, it's going to be used here and there, but not really going to be that overall used compared to my melee. Now for our melee, our melee is around 63, and truly the only stat which is required to be as high as we can possibly get it, as for that fast regen speed which will always be needed in the end, and if you want to go ahead and use Hammer Strike as much as possible, the higher the strength stat is, the higher the regen will be. And although the other mods will come in handy, it's nice to have this stat as high as possible for most certain encounters. Now, as my stats can't be molded any further to the way I desire without further grinding and tinkering for that ideal role, in an ideal world, I would have sacrificed around 20 to maybe 30 discipline stats and pushed that into my mobility so I can increase my movement speed across the board. And if I get lucky, and get a Void Affinity Peregrine Greaves, I would have added on traction for further mobility increasement. All this at the end of the day would help me for faster movement on the field, as you have to remember that while you're going to be cleaning up minors and majors in the flash, you're also competing against teammates who will have their own objectives, and sometimes not everything will work in your favour. For armour, the Peregrine Greaves are of course going to be needed for that extra inner melee damage, which will be the main corner card for taking on or taking out bosses we face. You're then going to need two seasonal dawn arc affinity armour pieces, so we can mod in heavy handed and quick charge, which will aid us with providing both melee and special ammo back upon reaching its condition, and then after that you'll need another two more arc affinity armour pieces, so you can put on shotgun scavenger or shotgun reserves. Whichever one you pick will come in handy as this is one of the main downsides to not having any shotgun related mods. So with the armour covered, let's take a look at the mod you'll be rocking for the set. We have the following. Head, Major Resist, Shotgun Ammo Finder and Quick Charge mod. Arm, Shotgun Loader and Heavy Handed mod. Chest, Resilience and Shotgun Reserves times 2 mod. Leg, Strength mod. Mark, Concussive Dampener, Outreach and Solar Plexus mod. We have now covered the main gear and items you'll need for this build, so how does it play out gameplay wise is not really hard to imagine. Firstly, as we've centered this build around Gambit and Gambit Prime mainly, your first and most simple step is to just get kills with whatever shotgun you have equipped it, and build up your charge with light mechanic while also regaining your ammo. Once that's set up, you can go ahead and use your specialized and all powerful melee against the tougher adds to weaken them or just outright kill them, and then use your 1-2 punch shotgun or trench barrel shotgun to finish them and of course collect your moats to send blockers back to the other side. Rinse and repeat until enough moats have been banked to move to the boss phase of stuff, and this is where the build will come into practice with everything built up along the way. Once the envoys have been defeated and the boss is available for damage, with our charged melee and times 2 charged by light, we can go ahead and attack the boss, which should stun him from the first hit we connect with. Then you should promptly have your 1-2 punch shotgun equipped it, and then start to lay into him. If everything goes as planned, and you didn't get launched to Mars in the process, the boss should have the Hammer Strike debuff still active, which for you and your team can make use of while you on your other hand will use your 1-2 punch shotgun to stun him per hit, and overall make him unable to fight back until their immunity shields are back up again, or until you run out of ammo. 
you should at this point have the boss health down to around two thirds, or around that from the first primeval stack. Overall, this shows just how powerful the build can be with just one user doing this. Now, do this with two or even three players with the same setup, and you'll probably be able to do a lot more damage than shown. Maybe even one third of the health will be left by the end of it. Maybe. That uh, might be a bit too much when you think about it. So what's generally happening in the background of the build to make this work? Firstly, with the quick charge mod active, we can get charged by light by simply using our shotguns against the various as we face. While this is happening, the heavy handed mod becomes active in two ways. First, with charge by light stack, if we use our melee against any enemies and kill them in the process, we will get half our melee energy back, while also using one of our charge by lights. Add on our 63 strength regen stat and outreach mod for faster melee regen upon active use of our abilities, and also defeating enemies of course, and you should have your melee back within mere seconds. At the same time, while surrounded, the heavy handed mod will also provide us with special armor back to reserves per kill. So, while defeating an enemy with my shotgun, I'll get refunded one ammo back per kill, but only while surrounded. Our melee now has been enhanced with the Peregrine Greaves increased damage via the air, and thanks to our heavy handed mod and stats, we can make full use of this as many times as we like. I've decided though that simply wouldn't be enough though. So, for extra measure, I chucked in Solar Plexus for some extra solar melee damage on top of our Peregrine Greaves, so we can really cause some outlasting damage. As you can see, everything is benefiting from each other, which is why this is a top tier PvE solar build for those that want to simply cause as much damage as possible within a small time frame. And although I keep saying this is suitable for Gambit mainly, you can use this for other PvE content such as Strikes, The Sundial, Menagerie, Nightfalls, Public Events, even PvP, as long as you use it in Quick Play of course. But what about the downside you say? Well, the biggest downside for the build is special ammo economy which is a major issue you'll come across quite a bit in game, where sometimes you'll have enough ammo to last you for the whole game, which is great, while others not so much. Although yes, having the heavy handed secondary perk and scavenger mods can help with negating some of the issues, they won't always proc, which means sometimes you may end up in situations where you have no ammo at all, and I mean literally zilch. And then when you think about it further, if you're playing in Gambit and you get invaded while the situation happens, well best say goodbye because this won't go down well for you. You can easily burn through ammo with this build if you're not careful, so ideally maybe switch your heavy to a heavy machine gun, so that if you do run out of special ammo, at least with your machine gun at hand, you'll have plenty of rounds to finish off a simple ad, who could simply drop a special ammo for you, which could be the saving grace you'll need. At the same time, having perks such as field prep or backup mag, or any ammo buffing perks can be extremely helpful for your own survival. Overall, whether you enjoy Gambit or not with this build is down to you, but ultimately with this setup in mind, if you just want to melt bosses in an instant while rocking double shotguns because hell, why not, then I hope this build here serves you well. And if not, then at least you've got a template to know where to improve on from there. So if you enjoyed the video, then please by all means leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, a link is always down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you guys in the next one.